Hi everybody. Um, this video is a quick intro into using thin meshes with Mesh Fusion. Uh, thin meshes come into play with things like uh, bisection, uh, union of thin walls, recessed or raised panels, holes through thin walls, and things of that nature. Um, Mesh Fusion supports these things through its normal Boolean operations, but there are a few settings and methods uh, that are vital to working with thin meshes. There's a short list of things to keep in mind at the end of this video. So first, let's start with the notion of a bisector, a very thin box that splits another mesh into two pieces. We've added some thin mesh cubic presets in Mesh Fusion 102, but I'll make a new one here just to uh, illustrate that they're nothing special. Um, you can flatten an existing mesh like I'm doing here, or extrude a 2D shape, for example. And the thin mesh does not have to be planar. It can be curved or wavy or whatever. So I'm scaling the box in Z to 0.25%, or 1 400th of its original size. That's very thin, uh, but you can go even thinner. And I'm also scaling the box in uh, Y and X just to cover the ellipsoid. And I've recentered the box. From there, it's just a, a normal new fusion with subtraction. I note, however, that I'm setting the default strip width very narrow, uh, 3%. It's, while it's not essential for bisection, it, it does become uh, important when we start cutting holes or uh, creating recessed panels. And for now, it will help us see uh, clearly just how thin this bisection is. Okay, so here's the fusion, um, subtracting the box from the ellipsoid. You can see the bisection is very narrow. In fact, most of what you're seeing here are the strips. And again, uh, narrow strips are not required for bisection, and indeed some uh, nice looks can be had with broader strips in bisection. Now I'm going to add a second crossing bisector. And that's where some of the special methods come in. First, I'd note that it's best not to use the duplicate mesh and tree option that you get by dragging onto its parent node. That creates a, a coincident mesh and that can cause fusion to grind a bit, uh, especially when working with very thin meshes. Instead, uh, I'll just duplicate uh, normally uh, and then rotate the duplicate mesh and then add it uh, to the fusion item with the usual drag and drop. And there you can see our uh, default uh, thin strip width is in play. But uh, more importantly, as we widen the strip, we can see that it's not actually working. Uh, when we have bisectors that intersect each other, we need to use a different method. And while this method can be accomplished in the 3D tree, uh, I think it, it would be clearer to look at it first in the schematic. And we'll come back to the tree in a moment. So here's our schematic conversion. Uh, and you can see the tree structure mimicked here. But rather than using the typical fusion branch style of subtraction, where um, a negated union of the two boxes would be used, we're going to set up something equivalent using intersection. We'll need the uh, fusion feed negated channels for the two boxes. And, and remember that an intersection with a negated box is equivalent to a subtraction. You can think of it as an intersection between the ellipsoid and everything outside of the box. But when I attach the second box, you can see something is still not right. And uh, that's where the second vital step in using thin meshes comes in. In most cases, you'll need to set the tracking sub D offset for the mesh that's being cut to zero. In some cases, the cutters should have their tracking sub D offsets set to zero also. That setting lets Fusion use higher sub D levels uh, when seeking and tracking seams. For the cleanest results uh, with tight bisectors, you may wish to increase the Fusion sub divs as well. All right, so back to the tree. Um, so we can see how the idea of negated intersections is accomplished there. Like the schematic method, we will move the boxes to the intersection node. Things will get a little funky at this stage uh, because a second step is needed. Since we do not have a uh, option of a negated node uh, in the tree like we do in the schematic, we will turn uh, the boxes inside out instead. And that's done by going to uh, poly selection mode and then flipping all of the polys of each box. Meshes with their polygons flipped or inverted 
is exactly uh, the equivalent of hooking up their fusion feed negated channels in the schematic. And uh, there it is, the equivalent of our schematic setup. So keep these three vital things in mind when working with thin meshes. Um, use a narrow strip width, that's especially important when you're cutting thin holes or doing recessed panels. And use one of the uh, negated intersection methods. Um, anytime you have multiple intersecting subtractive thin meshes. And remember to set that uh, tracking sub D offset to zero. All right, thanks.